In Jamaica, a major cabinet reshuffle or simply a cover-up? That's the question political analysts are posing following the sudden announcement by Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller on Friday that Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson has been booted from the health portfolio. There have been several calls led by the opposition for the health minister to be fired. However, the embattled minister will instead be reassigned as the Minister of Labor and Social Security. Pundits maintain that he should be fired. Private members club, which is called our cabinet. Um, nobody ever resigns and nobody is ever asked to resign. It is, it doesn't happen and that should, should change. Um, I'm hoping that Jamaicans will call for that. If the box stops with you and something like this has happened where 19 babies have died, we think needlessly, needlessly, then the person ought to resign. They shouldn't even wait for the prime minister. The person should resign, the minister should resign, and the prime minister should ask the minister to resign if the minister, um, you know, does not volunteer his or her resignation. His transfer to another ministry is not good enough as far as we are concerned and leads us to ask even more questions. The first one being, you know, this whole matter of incompetence. After what happened with the 19 babies who died, um, and then, of course, we remember the Chick V debacle, why should the public have any confidence in the minister heading another ministry? And then what about his replacement? What is his track record? I think Jamaicans must ask some very tough questions about where Dr. Ferguson is going and then who is also replacing him. Dr. Ferguson has been facing intense pressure to step down as health minister following what many have described as his poor handling of a bacterial outbreak that killed 19 babies. Between June and October, 42 babies were infected by the Klebsiella and Siracha viruses at the University Hospital of the West Indies and the Cornwall Regional Hospital. However, Dr. Ferguson told the nation that he was only informed of the situation on October 16 after the media broke the story. Twelve babies died at the University Hospital and seven at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. Political analyst Richard Crawford believes that Prime Minister Porter Simpson was forced to act because of impending general elections. He says the party had to listen to Jamaicans. However, he argues that not everyone will be pleased with the decision to keep Dr. Ferguson in the cabinet. The situation of the Ministry of Health with Dr. Ferguson is a major crisis. And I'd imagine almost every woman in Jamaica was so angry with it. I don't think um, they have put him to work in the Ministry of Labor. In other words, he hasn't really been fired from the government, from the cabinet. He still is a minister of government. I don't know. It might please some people. I don't think it's going to please everybody. Apparently, the Ministry of Health is a very tightly run, politically sympathetic organization. In other words, if you're not of the political orientation, there's a big problem. That has been the talk on the street for a long time, and it has come out in the open now. And when it was also said that um, the doctor who resigned, he said he didn't resign because... Of, of, of anything, but the, the, the country was told and found out that they, re they tried to see if they could ask one or two people to resign and if that would help and save Dr. Ferguson, but that was not good enough for the people. The people said, no, we're not taking that. So they had to go a step further, which is to move him out of the ministry altogether. It has some weight. Um, the idealists would say he should not have been kept in the cabinet. You're right, they're on the road to an election, so maybe the PNP will argue, well, we have an election around the corner. The people want Dr. Ferguson out of the Ministry of Health. So we have done the next best thing that we could do and not create a lot of fracture and disappointment within the People's National Party because clearly Dr. Ferguson has been support. 
So is the Prime Minister shielding Dr. Ferguson, political commentator and convener of Hear the Children Cry, Betty and Blaine think so? Well, clearly they're friends, aren't they? I mean, uh, this is a point I was making, that they, obviously they operate as a friend and friend club, and you don't want to ask your friend to resign. I think it's a weakness in our system, and I believe that's why this country has been kept back for so long. People must be held accountable at the highest level, and the proper thing is to ask for the resignation. I don't know if the Prime Minister has the courage to do that, but more than that, we've got to do something about this friend and friend government, how government is run, and how um, absolutely um, alien it is now has become to the people of Jamaica that a cabinet minister can and should resign. That, that must change. So who will replace Dr. Fenton Ferguson? That person is the man who has been serving as a minister with responsibility for the public service, Horace Daly. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller says Mr. Daly, who has been leading the charge in the ongoing public sector wage negotiations for the 2015-2017 contract period with public sector unions, will continue to do so until the current round of discussions are completed. Horace Daly isn't new to the health portfolio. He served as Minister of Health between 2006 and 2007. Mr. Daly is also the Member of Parliament for the constituency of Northern Clarendon, which he held from 1989 to 2007 and regained in 2011. Also affected by the new cabinet shuffle is Derek Hellyer. He will only have responsibility for the Agriculture and Fisheries Ministry, the Labour and Social Security assignment, which he continues to hold after the death of a former Agriculture Minister Roger Clark in 2014 has been separated from his super ministry. According to the release from the office of the Prime Minister, the new roles take effect on Monday, November 9. And the opposition Jamaica Labour Party has been quick to react to the reassignment of the Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson. Andrew Holness has labeled the Prime Minister's shuffling of her cabinet Minister Fenton Ferguson as, quote, merely shielding her minister and shifting accountability and responsibility away from him, end of quote. He continues, the Prime Minister's actions show a very high tolerance and patience with failure under performance which places the health and security of the people of Jamaica at risk, end quote. Meanwhile, the opposition spokesman on health, Marlene Malu Ford, agrees that simply transferring Dr. Ferguson to another ministry will not resolve the issues. The reassignment of the health minister by the prime minister, I think, sends a clear and unequivocal message that the prime minister has put party above country. I don't know what signs there are to clearly tell us that having presided over such failures in the health ministry and having not exercised the kind of leadership that is required to deal with the issues in the health ministry, that he will be able to do so in another ministry. Mrs. Malu Ford says it's unacceptable that, the, that Mrs. Simpson Miller has failed to hold Dr. Ferguson accountable in connection with the dead baby scandal. The minister, the health minister Ferguson, is yet to show the country that he understands what ministerial responsibility is all about. The prime minister is yet to show the country that she understands what holding her ministers accountable is all about. Both combined and the government in general, they are yet to show the country that they are prepared to exercise the kind of leadership required to deal with the real problems that are causing no end of pain and suffering in the lives of Jamaicans at this time. Totally, totally unacceptable state of affairs. The people have, have been slapped in the face repeatedly, and perhaps it is because the Prime Minister has declared that Jamaica is PNP country, so they think they can do anything and get away with it. But I believe that the people of Jamaica have had enough of the contempt for them that has been shown by this government, of the failures, the 
sector after sector of the broken promises of just bad leadership.